Hi, this is Nicole Dyer from Family Locket, and I'm going to be answering the question, is this a false segment? This is the Research Like a Pro with DNA question and answer series, where people who are taking the Research Like a Pro with DNA online course or study group ask questions and we answer them. So when talking about false matches, um, it's helpful to understand the concept of pseudo segments. So the company algorithm weaves back and forth between nucleotides on the maternal and the paternal chromosome every once in a while, looking for uh, matches with other people with that same sequence. And when that happens, um, this creates a new sequence that wasn't actually there. And this is a pseudo segment. It's not the actual segment on your paternal chromosome or maternal chromosome. It's kind of a mix of the two. So it's different from the maternal sequence and it's different from the paternal sequence and therefore it's it's not going to triangulate with other matches um, in that same spot. And so here at the bottom of the slide you can see how some of these um, C's, T's, G's, and A's, how some of them are taken from the paternal chromosome and some are taken from the maternal chromosome and mixed up in this pseudo segment. The reason this can happen is because the, the DNA testing companies don't know which nucleotide is from which chromosome, if it's from the paternal chromosome or the maternal. So it's just looking for strings of the same sequences on your DNA and matching it with other people's DNA. And um, many companies don't use phase data, and so there's an increased chance of having these pseudo segments created. Ancestry says that they use phase data. They try to phase the data before they match it, um, but other companies don't. And my example today is from MyHeritage. And so the danger of using these um, small segments that are sometimes pseudo segments is that often um, we just can't tell which ones are real and which ones are false. And from people who have you know, checked their own matches against their parents' matches, we're able to see that many of the matches under seven centimorgans are false matches. Um, the reasoning behind this is that true matches will also match one of your parents. So you could take your entire match list and compare it with your parents' match list. And um, so if you have your mom's match list and your dad's match list and your own match list, then all of your matches should also be matches to your parents because you received all of your DNA from them. So William Bettinger did this experiment and he found that 60% of his matches below seven centimorgans were not shared with either parent. So that means that they were false matches where that um, weaving back and forth created a pseudo segment. And so we have to be careful with those smaller matches. There's just a higher chance of them being based on a pseudo segment. You can read more about this at his blog. Uh, the post is called The Danger of Distant Matches. So I found an example of this, of this in my own match list, well, the match list that I was using, um, and found a match with Daniel. In fact, I was just going through all of the my heritage theory of family relativity estimates, and you can sort your match list to see only one matches that have uh, relativity theory. And so I did that and um, I was just going through and labeling the ones that looked accurate with a maternal or a paternal color. And I came to this one with Daniel and the theory of relativity just didn't look quite right. And it was just a 14.9 centimorgan match and it was two segments. One was 8.7 and the other was 6.2 centimorgans. So they're both kind of down in that range of possibly a false segment. And then I looked at his shared match list and as you can see, he had 247 shared matches. Um, the first, in the first uh, few of them, only three of them were paternal and four of them were maternal. So that indicated to me that this match wasn't obviously a maternal match or obviously a paternal match. It seemed a little fishy. And I also noticed as I scrolled down through the entire list of 247 shared matches that none of them had the triangulation symbol, the purple symbol I have here at the bottom of this slide with the gray box around it. So none of them were listed as being triangulated.
out of all 247. So I also thought that was strange and maybe indicating that this was a false match. So I scrolled down and looked at the chromosome browser for Daniel, and um, this is where the two matches were. And I thought, well, gee, isn't there somebody else on chromosome 9 at that spot who um, he could triangulate with if that's a real match? And I thought, well, how could I know who else is on that segment of chromosome 9 to check against? And... Um, so I just thought, is it really possible that no segments triangulate there? And then I realized we could download the segments spreadsheet and then look on that. So at MyHeritage, you're able to do this. So if you go to the match list at MyHeritage and click on the three dots to the right of, at the top of your match list, then you can click this export shared DNA segment info for DNA matches. And then you'll get a, a CSV file that you can download and open with Excel and you can see a list of all of the segments shared with DNA matches. So I had been experimenting with this methodology from Jim Bartlett, where he talks about how to triangulate your whole genome. And so um, this is kind of where I got the idea to do this. Uh, previously, I hadn't ever used this downloaded segment spreadsheet much. But he talks about how to download the spreadsheet and then how to sort it. So he says to sort it by shared centimorgans and then remove any segments under 10 centimorgans, just because a lot of those could be false. And there's a lot more that are under 10 centimorgans, so it's easier to work with your, with your um, segments in this methodology if you remove the smaller ones. And then he says to sort by chromosome and then to sort by start point. So I've hidden the match names here, but you can see that the chromosomes, um, they're all mixed up. Right now it's sorted by the length of the segment. So the longest one is an 88 centimorgan segment and then 78 and so forth. So I sorted it by centimorgans and deleted out any segments under 10. And then I went ahead and sorted it by chromosome and then by start point. So once you sort it by chromosome and start point, the overlapping segments are now near each other. And um, in his tutorial, Jim says that um, you'll see overlapping segments, but you won't know which ones are paternal and which ones are maternal because um, the testing company doesn't know and you have to figure that out by logic and by doing genealogy. And he also said that some of them, usually the ones that are under 15 centimorgans, um, some of those smaller ones won't triangulate with either side, maternal or paternal, and could be false. So that caught my eye because I've always wondered how to know if a segment is true or false, uh, you know, if it's a pseudo segment. So I thought I would try this out. So I went ahead and sorted Robert's matches by chromosome and by start location. And then I went to chromosome 9 to about start point 120 uh, megabase pairs where the segment that I suspected was a false segment with Daniel began. And so I chose one of these matches and I chose the match in row 4,872, it starts with J-A, but I've cut off the rest of the names for privacy. And so I went to his match page in MyHeritage. And the next step in Jim's uh, methodology is to look at one of these matches and then use their shared match list to find other matches who triangulate with him or her. And so I went to that person's match page and looked at the shared match list. So here's that person's shared match list and as you can see I've circled the triangulation symbol. So some of these matches are showing that they're triangulated and if you click on that it opens up the chromosome browser and you can see if they're triangulated on chromosome 9. And if they are then you can assign all of these ones to the same group so you can give them group number one. And then you just keep going down your spreadsheet and assigning group one or group two or group A, B, whatever you want to call them, and until you have two groups. So this can take quite a long time because you have to keep clicking that button at the bottom, show more DNA matches in the shared matches list. And if you have seen it, sometimes there's 200 or more shared matches for a person. Once you've done it, then you'll be able to have um, two kind of groups and you can see here that I was giving one of the groups 
the IED number TG-B, and the other group I gave the ID TG-C. And there were only five of these matches who were the red or TG-B group, and the rest were TG-C. And because the first match in the TGB group was a known maternal second cousin, I was able to give them the M for maternal um, notation in my spreadsheet, and th therefore the other group was paternal. So now that I have two groups, I can use the MyHeritage chromosome browser to check for triangulation with that segment that I thought was false from Daniel. So here are two people from my first group, the one I had given the red color to that were maternal. And sure enough, they triangulate on that part of chromosome nine. And then when I add in the match with Daniel that I think is false, they no longer triangulate. And I have set the threshold to be the lowest possible threshold to centimorgans. And this segment with Daniel is 6.7 centimorgans. So if it did triangulate with everybody, it, it would be um, within the threshold and it would have the box drawn around it. So I know it's not a maternal segment because I know Rudy and John are maternal matches and they triangulate there. So Daniel's segment isn't maternal. So then I'm going to try some of the paternal group. And so I get Jason and Michael, and they triangulate at that part of chromosome 9. And the threshold is set low to 2 centimorgans. And then I go ahead and add in Daniel. And his 6.7 centimorgan segment doesn't triangulate with the known paternal group either, so Jason and Michael's group. So if the segment with Daniel is not maternal and it's not paternal, then there's only one other option likely has to be a false segment or a pseudo segment. So assuming this really is a pseudo segment, um, it makes sense because Daniel doesn't triangulate with the maternal group and Daniel doesn't triangulate with the paternal group. So there's only one option left, a pseudo segment. And Robert's paternal segment might have a like a code like this one, CTGG, TTACT, while the maternal segment has A, T, 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 C, T, G, A, T. And weaving back and forth would create this pseudo segment with some nucleotides from the paternal segment and some from the maternal. And that matches Daniel's segment there. So it created a, f a false match between Robert and Daniel. So in summary, how to spot a pseudo segment, you can download your segments file from MyHeritage, sort by chromosome and start point, and then find other matches who share segments at that start point. Then use the shared matches and triangulation icons to separate them into two groups, and know that these two groups represent the maternal paternal and maternal chromosomes in that spot. And you may not know which group is maternal and which is paternal, but that's okay. And pseudo segments, you'll notice, will not go into either of these two groups. And so this is from Jim Bartlett's blog post, Triangulating Your Genome. And so he's the one who kind of gave me this idea to try to spot pseudo segments in this way. And it seemed to work. Um, of course, there's always the chance that someone is fully identical at that region with you and sharing on both the maternal and paternal chromosomes. Um, but if that were the case, I think we would see that Daniel was triangulating with someone in that spot. And since he's not, and the other people are triangulating with each other, it does seem to point to the fact that his is a pseudo segment. So um, if you want to try doing this methodology yourself, I really recommend Jim's blog post, Triangulating Your Genome, a how-to example with MyHeritage, and you can find that at his website, segmentology.org.